Welcome, today we are going to take a look at the Sailing Stones mystery. If you found the video interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe. There is bonus content at the end, so make sure you watch until then. Sailing stones, also known as sliding rocks, walking rocks, rolling stones, and moving rocks, constitute a geological phenomenon wherein rocks autonomously traverse and carve extensive tracks across a level valley surface without any involvement from animals. This movement transpires when expansive, delicate ice sheets afloat on a transient winter pond disintegrate under the sun. Instances of sliding rocks leaving trails have been documented and analyzed in diverse sites, such as Little Bonnie Claire Playa in Nevada, and notably at Racetrack Playa in Death Valley National Park, California, where the noteworthy quantity and length of the tracks have garnered attention. The racetrack stones are scattered across the playa floor, primarily concentrated in the southern region. Historical records note the presence of some stones approximately 100 meters, 330 feet, away from the shore, but the majority are located in close proximity to their respective source outcrops. Three distinct lithologic types have been identified. 1. Cyanite, predominantly found on the west side of the playa. 2. Dolomite, characterized by subrounded blue-gray stones, with white bands. 3. Black dolomite, the most prevalent type, typically discovered in angular joint blocks or slivers. The majority of dolomite stones in the southern half of the playa originate from a steep promontory, 260 meters, 850 feet, high, parallel to the east shore at the south end of the playa. Intrusive igneous rocks from adjacent slopes, mostly tan-colored feldspar-rich cyanite, contribute to the composition. The tracks left by these stones are often up to 330 feet, 100 meters, in length, 8 to 30 centimeters, 3 to 12 in, wide, and generally less than 2.5 centimeters, 1 in, deep. The moving stones typically range in diameter from about 15 to 46 centimeters, 6 to 18 in. Stones with rough bottoms create straight, striated tracks, while those with smooth bottoms tend to meander. Occasionally, stones overturn, revealing a different edge to the ground and leaving a distinct track in their path. The trails vary in both direction and length. Stones that begin near each other may travel parallel for a period before one abruptly changes direction, either to the left, right, or back to its original path. Trail lengths also differ. Two similarly sized and shaped rocks may move uniformly, with one eventually advancing or halting in its trajectory. A specific set of conditions is believed to be necessary for the movement of these stones, including 1. A flooded surface. 2. A thin layer of clay. 3. Wind. 4. Ice flows. 5. Warming temperatures leading to ice breakup. Research history. The investigation into the movement of stones at racetrack playa dates back to the early 1900s. Despite extensive study, the origins of stone movement remained unconfirmed, prompting ongoing research with various hypotheses. However, a breakthrough occurred in August 2014 when time-lapse video footage revealed rocks moving at high wind speeds within the flow of thin, melting sheets of ice. This discovery led scientists to attribute the movement of the stones to the phenomenon known as ice shove. Early Investigation The documented history of the sliding rock phenomenon began in 1915 when prospector Joseph Crook visited Racetrack Playa. Subsequent interest from geologists Jim McAllister and Alan Agnew in 1948 resulted in the first report on sliding rocks suggesting that furrows left on the playa floor were remnants of scrapers propelled by strong gusts of wind. Controversy over the furrows spurred further investigations, including the study of similar phenomena at Little Bonnie Claire Playa in Nevada. Progress in the 1970s A stone movement monitoring program initiated in 1968 by Bob Sharp and Dwight Carey marked a significant step forward. Over seven years, they recorded the positions of 30 labeled stones, testing hypotheses such as the influence of ice flows on stone movement. Despite some stones not moving in summer and varying movements in winter, the study provided valuable insights into the sliding rock phenomenon. Continued research in the 1990s In 1995, Professor John Reed and research students conducted a follow-up study, confirming that some stones had moved in ice flows up to 800 m wide. Physicists studying the phenomenon in 1996 highlighted the role of compressed winds on smooth playa surfaces, emphasizing gusts as the initiating force and sustained winds as the propelling force for moving stones. 21st Century Developments Technological advancements, including inexpensive time-lapse digital cameras, played a crucial role in further understanding the geological processes at Racetrack Playa. In 2020, NASA ruled out microbial mats and wind-generated water waves as explanations for stone movement based on fossil evidence. Explanation The mystery of sliding rocks was considered solved in 2013 when GPS and time-lapse photography documented large-scale movements. Contrary to earlier hypotheses, the rocks were found to move when thin ice sheets, a few millimeters thick, broke up in ephemeral winter ponds during sunny mornings. 
These floating ice panels, frozen during cold nights, were driven by light winds, shoving rocks at speeds up to 5 m min. This explanation overturned previous assumptions about the role of strong winds, or thick ice, in moving the stones. Potential impact of climate change Given that the movement of rocks depends on specific and infrequent conditions, such as the occasional flooding of the typically dry playa and subsequent freezing of water, a shift towards drier winters and warmer winter nights could reduce the occurrence of these conditions. A statistical analysis conducted by Ralph Lorenz and Brian Jackson, examining published reports of rock movements, suggested, with 4, 1 odds, a perceived decline in occurrences between the 1960s 1990s and the 21st century. Theft and Vandalism of Rocks on May 30, 2013, the Los Angeles Times reported that park officials were investigating the theft of several rocks from Death Valley National Park. In August 2016, an illegal act resulted in approximately 16 kilometers, 10 miles, of tire tracks being left on the playa. A photographer visiting in September observed newly carved initials, D and K, on one of the rocks. Despite reports indicating that investigators had identified a suspect, as of March 2018, the vandal remained unidentified. During that time, a team of volunteers used gardening tools and 2,800 L, 750 US gallons, of water to clean the tire tracks from the racetrack. For a brief explanation about this part, I wanted to do at least one episode or even a series where I sail the dark web and show you different websites like Some Ordinary Gamers for those who knows. But I found out pretty early that you can get to some illegal stuff very easily. It's one thing to hear about it from others and seeing it for yourself, so I decided I'm not going to do that. This is a part of what was supposed to be the episode or series. Starting with the Shadow Wiki, which there is a clear net version too. The first thing you see is this image, homesick for a place I'm not even sure exists. Followed by a welcome message that reads. Hello. Welcome to this Shadow Wiki. This wiki focuses on, where applicable. Nanonymity, privacy plus security plus anonymity, spyware, surveillance, censorship, interoperability, and decentralization. Hardware. Software. Politics. Religion. Not just what is mainstream, but also that which is obscure or esoteric. Where things are made, how renewable they are, and their quality. This is the orange pill. This being the image. And a disclaimer. Mental health disclaimer. Shadow Wiki touches upon sensitive topics that may not be appropriate for some people who have certain traits. If you are paranoid and or have tendencies, your conclusions when reading Shadow Wiki's contents may cause you more harm. If you choose to read Shadow Wiki, try not to withdraw from society. Go outside, touch grass, drink water, do stretches, etc. Contact, contribution, and donation links, which I'm not going to show in this video. Followed by mirror links and FAQ. Some of the links present on the front page are Browsers, a thread about privacy and what browsers and solutions that would help you keep your privacy as much as you can. Darknet, which consists of links and more privacy-focused content such as VPN suggestions and new internet type of projects. Email, with a big thread about email providers and what you should look into when choosing one, with a lot of providers covered and rated. Hosting, with a rating of VPS or a virtual private server providers. IM or instant messages, that consists of different applications or sites like Discord, Signal, Skype that are rated on the spyware status. Mobile comms or mobile communications, with a lot of information from encryption, digital radio, to phones and operating systems and how privacy focused they are. Software, consists of some useful information about some software you can use from browsers and email clients to document readers and text editors. US poll is US politics, I'm not gonna dive into details as I'm not a political channel and don't want to offend anyone with my lack of informations. XMPP, that stands for Extensible Messaging and Presence Protocol, which is a choice of instant messaging. They dive deeper on the subject with information about the clients, server software and providers. NAMAC or the Nano Markdown Converter is a tool for converting simple markdown to XHTML. They dive deeper on the subject and how to use it. Thanks for watching. If you found the video interesting and want more like this, don't forget to like and subscribe.